Well, shoes and welcome everybody to the Sold Out Peterson Event Center on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. The six ranked Panthers in first place in the Big East hosting the surprising Providence College Friars. Sean McDonough with Bob Wenzel. Happy to have you with us. Herbert Hill with four points for Providence to lead the Friars. Aaron Gray has five of the eight Pittsburgh points. The other three from Mike Cook on a three point field goal. And they go inside to Aaron Gray again. The lead 10 to 6 for Pittsburgh. Two of the best big men in the league, with apologies to Roy Hibbert of Georgetown. Gray and Herbert Hill doing what is expected. Both of them very strong offensively early. Jeffrey McDermott, the strong drive along the baseline, and he was fouled. Look at the Liberty Mutual lineups. Four sophomores in the starting lineup ordinarily for Providence College. Brian McKenzie has come on the floor off the bench for PC and that Pittsburgh starting lineup that you saw the same five that has started every game now all 25 for the 21 and three Pitt Panthers Jamie Dixon believes if it isn't hit, broken don't fix it <laughs> amen Sam Young comes into the game had 21 against West Virginia in their last game and we were talking to Jamie Dixon today Sean and uh, I think he feels like he has nine starters starts those five because he has a cast system here the seniors and the juniors the upperclassmen play first here's Levance Fields steps into a three using Gray as a screen Pittsburgh the leading three-point shooting team in the Big East Conference Fields trying to make people forget about the famed Carl Krauser, who was a staple as the point guard for Pittsburgh in their NCAA run the last couple of years. This is where they excel. Defense. Stay between your man and the basket. They make you miss. You give up only 60 points per game overall. Less than that in Big East play. Brian McKenzie off the bench. Missed the three and it goes out of bounds to the Panthers after a timeout. All right, Dave, thank you. Welcome back to Pittsburgh, everybody. The Panthers with an early six-point lead. Sean McDonough and Bob Wenzel. Interesting matchup here, Bob, in that in Providence, in Big East League games this year, they're the highest-scoring team in the league, while Pittsburgh, as usual, the best defensive team. Yeah, they stay in front of their man. Providence would like it to go like this and get it up in the 70s. Pittsburgh wants to keep it in the 60s. They are home. It's likely to be there. And another comparison. These two teams each feature one of the best big men, not only in the Big East, but in the country. Coach Tim Welch says NBA people now are starting to talk to him about the senior Herbert Hill as a draft pick, and Aaron Gray certainly has a future in the NBA. Absolutely. When you shoot 67% from the field, that's going to get everyone's attention. And this guy, Aaron Gray, preseason Big East Player of the Year. He has done nothing to dissuade anybody from changing their opinion about that. He's the focus of their team. Having a good game so far in this one as well. Both of the Star Watch players off to a good start. Gray has seven, part of that hot Pittsburgh shooting. And Herbert Hill has four points. He's two for two from the floor. It's Levance Fields with the ball now. Into the corner for Antonio Graves. Generally the first sub off the bench, and he is again tonight. Sam Young has also come into the 23. And Gray just too big and strong right now for oh, Providence inside. He has nine. What a matchup between these two big guys, but Gray seems very focused, John. Sometimes he floats around out there, but not in this one. You start to think about effusive praise for Pittsburgh. They could be a number one seed the way they're playing. McDermott, a strong drive. His shot was blocked by Sam Young, but it wound up with Herbert Hill, and he has six for Providence, averaging just under 17 points per game. He's fifth in the Big East in scoring and rebounding. At 8.3 rebounds for Tilt. Nice response by Hill, huh? This is going to be very interesting watching these two going down the stretch. But don't forget about Fields and Curry. The point guard matchup, very important in this one as well. Gray, a tip off the young miss. And the rebound down to Hill. We mentioned earlier for those of you who joined us late. Providence almost exclusively a zone defense team this year, but Tim Welsh said we'll play a lot more man to man tonight against Pittsburgh. Gray so tough in the middle of the zone. They're a good three point shooting team, and the zone hasn't worked well against Pittsburgh in the past. Jeffrey McDermott with the bucket. He has three. 
you know, the thing about playing zone against Pittsburgh, they're so precise, and, and Gray is such a large target. They get anything they want. They just wait for you to make a mistake. They probe and probe and get a good one. So even though that they are a zone team, they're going to play predominantly man in a zone right now. Well, that five straight field goals made by Pittsburgh might have helped to get Providence out of the zone. Well, Aaron Gray has been very good already in this one, Sean. Size matters in basketball. Close to the basket plays. The use of the left hand deftly. And his teammates look for him. Kendall, a very good partner. Gray off to a great start. Nine points already. More than halfway to his average. Nearly six minutes gone by. Here's Young off a career high 21 points Wednesday night in their win at West Virginia. He turned it over. Amy Efejuku the other way. And now a drive by Brian McKenzie. And he was fouled before the shot. Tim Welsh is the Providence coach in his ninth season, 142 wins in the Rhode Island Capitol, already fourth all time in wins at PC. And behind legends, Joe Mullaney, Dave Gavin, and Al McClellan. And he's only five wins behind Al McClellan for third. And interestingly enough, Gary Walters, who's the head of the selection committee this year, the athletic director of Princeton, also coached for two years at Providence. Good hands on defense by Keith Benjamin. Nick Look at Dermott. that challenge, Sean, huh? Yep, a challenge three. <laughs> Not only is Jamie Dixon's Pittsburgh team the best three-point shooting team in the league, they defend the three better than any team in the conference. In his fourth season and coming up on 100 wins, already 20 victories plus this year with 21 for the fourth year in a row. He's the only Pittsburgh coach who's ever done that. And with a win tonight, it would be six straight seasons for Pittsburgh of at least 20 overall wins and at least 10 Big East wins. UConn, the only other team with a chance to do that, and they'd have to win all of their remaining conference games this season to match that. How about 31 wins in your rookie season as a head coach in the Big East? Not too bad, huh? And Jamie Dixon gets to 100 career wins, and it'll be very soon. He'll be among the 15 fastest coaches ever to reach 100 wins. But again, he's playing kind of a weak conference. Where <laughs> don't play tough competition. He shouldn't rack up the oh, wins. Yeah. Right, right, right. Only Mark Few and Roy Williams, if you're wondering who the other is. You get scarred winning, winning that many games that early. Very tough league. You know also what's happening, I think, in college basketball right now, Sean. Teams are playing better and better. A lot of those young players have gained a lot of responsibility and experience now, and Curry, one of them, only a sophomore. And a deep three for Sherrod Curry, their leading scorer. At 17 points per game, he is his first three of this. Behind Demetrius Nichols, Russell Carter. Nice move by Benjamin. First basket for the junior from Mount Vernon, New York. And a timeout called by Providence. Down by three, nearly eight minutes in. Three-point lead for Pittsburgh, the first-place team in the Big East, off to their best conference start through ten games ever. And right now looking behind at Georgetown, which moved into second place all alone with its win at home today over Marquette. And Providence, one of the pleasant surprises in the Big East this year, picked to finish 10th in the preseason Big East coaches poll. They're sixth and looking to move up. I'll tell you what, they've got a lot of offensive firepower on this team. They have not played well on the road, however. 14-2 and two at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. Only one win on the road at UConn. So they would like to get a couple of road wins for their resume. Five straight points now for Sherrod Curry. Incidentally, I want you to remember this quote, my friend. The RPI is a general indicator of relative strength. That's from Gary Walters, the head of the selection committee. So when those RPIs jump 15 places in a day, you'll understand why. Sam Young too strong, but Levon Kendall kept it alive. Now Ronald Ramon has just come into the ball game, missed the floater. Pittsburgh crashing the boards, and finally it wound up with Epajuku. And now a chance for Providence to take the lead. Dwayne Williams, a freshman guard, has come in off their bench, and this is another freshman, Ray Hall. 
With his size, they feel like he can match up well with Aaron Gray. Gray's not in the game right now, and Hall takes advantage to score his first bucket of the night. He's 6'11, 275 pounds. Well, he matches up size wise, but lacks experience, of course. But remember, when Aaron Gray was a freshman and sophomore, barely played at all, played behind Chris Taft, and has now become a great player for Pittsburgh. Foul now on Dwayne Williams and a full timeout. First foul on Williams, Jamie Dixon and the Panthers trailing by one. Rivalry Week presented by Cisco Providence with a one point lead here at Pittsburgh. And tonight at 9 Eastern Time, be sure to tune into ESPN for an SEC rivalry not to be missed. Florida, the number one team in the country. We chatted earlier this week with Syracuse coach Jim Beheim. He said he'd be very surprised if Florida did not win it again. And they're looking like the best team in the country, particularly late with that 9-0 record in the conference. And that's the slate ahead of them at Kentucky. And certainly some difficult games left. But they get by tonight, they could run the table. Well, I agree with Jim Beheim. They are by far the best team in the country. And not only are they the best team in the country, they are the most fun to watch. Horford and Noah inside. They work so well together. And I love Noah's hair. <laughs> yeah, I, I like anybody's hair, actually. <laughs> an envious point of view. <laughs> Tyrell Biggs on the floor now with the ball for Pittsburgh. Providence on an 11 2 run to take the lead. They look for their first win ever in their fourth try here at the Peterson Event Center. They haven't won in Pittsburgh since the days of the old Fitzgerald Fieldhouse back in 1998. Tough place to play, the Peterson Event Center, a castle for this program. Ben Howland, of course, and Jamie Dixon's been here eight years. Howland, four. They created the environment for a building like this to be built. And what a great thing they have created here. Jamie Dixon, four years a head coach, four years in the NCAA tournament, four years with great, great success. Incidentally, last year, Florida beat Kentucky at Rupp Arena on senior day. Aaron Gray just called for his first foul. And now Sherrod Curry with another tough shot. He's led this Providence run. Of course, he's coming off an amazing performance Tuesday night at home at the Dunkin' Donut Center in Providence. In that game, PC trailed by eight with a minute 40 to go. And Curry scored the last nine points of the game to give the Friars a one-point win and a big one given their status as a potential bubble team in the NCAA tournament. Could not afford to lose to the last place team in your league. Curry in the Atlanta area that called for a travel. That's also called a roll if he was in wrestling. Curry is a very, very good player, obviously. He's a guy who really can put it on the floor. He can shoot the three. He's got those change-up moves, herky-jerky kind of player. And that's why he's even little and can get to the lane and make shots like that one. Ronald Ramon, excellent three-point shooter, best in the league in conference games and percentage. McDermott got his hands in. McDermott does so many things well. He's among the conference leaders in steals, and he helped create that steal. Dwayne Williams had the ball and got the timeout, so the Friars will have the ball with a three-point lead. Big Monday, those two great matchups on ESPN at 7. We're right back here at the peak for Louisville and the Pittsburgh Panthers. And then a 9 Eastern rematch, perhaps the best game played so far this season in college basketball, Oklahoma State and Texas. It's Big Monday presented by Bud Light, available in high definition on ESPN HD. The first meeting between the Cowboys and Longhorns was on January 16th. A two-point thriller won by Oklahoma State in the third overtime on a three-pointer with three seconds to go by Mario Bogan. He and Kevin Durant, the brilliant Texas freshman, each with 37 points and double digits rebounds as well. And Mario Bogan is a transfer from the University of Florida. Imagine if he were still on that team. Obviously was not getting minutes, decided to go to transfer you, as Oklahoma State frequently called, when Eddie Sutton was there and uh, now Sean. So he's having a good end of his career. There's Jeffrey McDermott leading the Big East in assists, and he's a forward at 6'7", really a point forward. 
High school quarterback has great vision. Perry missed a layup, flying through the middle of the lane. Here's Ronald Ramon on the push. Off to Mike Cook. And Aaron Gray called for a second foul. Good position by Herbert Hill, forced the seven-footer Gray over his back. This is a great start for Providence. If they can get Gray to the bench, they can even take more advantage of Hill inside. Physical nature of the league. A little whack on the right arm by Gray inadvertently. Actually, Gray had good position. There was just a long rebound that came to Hill. Yep. As well positioned for that carom. Six-team foul now on Pittsburgh. McDermott wants to handle the ball more. I think Tim Welsh feels that they were getting shots too early in the shot clock. He wants his best passer with the ball in his hands a little bit more. He was buried inside the first eight minutes of the game. Effajuku a deep three. And the long rebound to Fields. He might have gone away with a step after he corralled the rebound. Mike Cook kicked it out to Sam Young. Nice move to the bucket. Athletic. Best athlete on the team comes off the bench. Good block by, by LeVance, huh? Out of bounds off the leg of Ronald Ramon. Providence and Pittsburgh in this rivalry. The Panthers have won the last six head-to-head. -head. Trying to make it seven straight over the Friars on their home court where they are 77-7 and seven all time. Sean McDonough with Bob Wenzel. Jamie Dixon and the Pittsburgh Panthers have won four in a row coming into this one in 11 of their last 12. Only the three losses on the season and two of those were in overtime. The only home loss to Marquette. And in that one Dominique James played great made the free throws at the end and though he's been slumping lately. And Marquette as you mentioned loses to Georgetown today their game with West Virginia Monday will be very interesting. And Dominic James in the loss at Georgetown today two out of 17 from the floor. Herbert Hill. Oh. Wow. Fifth year senior from Kinston North Carolina with the face up jumper and he has eight. He is one of those silent players that you look at the scorecard after the game and he's got a double double. Very rarely misses. Fields got into the lane well, but then threw up a wild shot, rebounded by McDermott. He's third in the league in rebounding at 9.7. You mentioned among the leaders in steals, he is the leader in assists, but unfortunately for Tim Welch, he turns it over a lot as well. When we come back, we'll take a look and listen back at one of the most memorable plays in college basketball history. Back in the days of Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, Jerome Lane smashing the backboard, Mike Gorman and Bill Raftery with the memorable call. So much success in recent years for Pittsburgh. I think that's still the play most people think of first if you said pick one moment from Pittsburgh basketball history. Aaron Indeed. Gray on the bench with two fouls. He's off to a great start, nine points and four rebounds. Herbert Hill, eight points and four boards for Providence. We'll see if Providence can be wise in their offense and go to Hill frequently with Bray out. Sam Young with four off the bench, the sophomore from Clinton, Maryland. Pittsburgh has played without Gray in foul trouble in a number of games this year. It hasn't seemed to hurt them that much. Kendall can guard. Recurring problem, Bob. It's just what we saw again, another turnover, back-to-back -back possessions with sloppy turnovers for the Friars. Yes, a little bit of the youth shows every once in a while for Tim Welsh's team. Levance Fields, and Antonio Graves, Levon Kendall, Sam Young, and Mike Cook for the sixth-ranked Pitt Panthers. Sam Young, that means he has to play the four spot, only 6'6", six, six. so it's a smallish team out there right now. Levon Kendall under the weather, and a foul called on Jeffrey McDermott, his first. Levon Kendall had flu-like symptoms yesterday, did not practice. He did take part in their walkthrough this morning. 
I spoke to him just before the game. He said, I feel like my head's going to explode. I, mean, I haven't really pushed myself in a couple of days. So he wasn't sure how he would feel once the game started. Well, they wave off the goal. And a foul Offensive. against Sam Young as he tried to establish that good position he wound up with inside. His second. End line out of bounds play. He got a little too physical. Shoved his opponent out of bounds. That's a foul in any league. As you mentioned, he had a great game against West Virginia. He's a great athlete. But they are small right now, and they should go to Hill. Especially if a guy's head is pounding, as you've described. I'm not sure the Friars know that. Maybe they're monitoring our telecast, though. You never know. It'd be wise to do that so they can take advantage of your insights. Good ball movement by Providence. McDermott, one of those four sophomore starters who account for 59% of the Providence points. The three primary bench players are freshmen. They have a very bright future. And another turnover. Cook lost it on a baseline drive to Hill. And now Curry the push. Boy, is he quick. Hard to believe. He was not highly recruited out of Wheeler High School in Gainesville, Georgia, where he played on a couple of state championship teams. Scored almost 1,900 career points. But Providence got him very late in his senior year in school back in April of his senior year, late Saturday. Well, when we go inside the play right here, you're going to see what's called a hedge. The screen will be set. Kendall will step out to prevent any easy penetration by Curry. That is the hedge. His man is supposed to get back to him. You can see the roll to the basket. So they've defended it quite well. Pittsburgh, excellent defensively. And that's inside the play. Providence attacking that defense well. Only one league opponent has scored more than 70 points against Pittsburgh. You mentioned the RPI, a relative indicator. And Providence was 48 yesterday. I don't know how they lost five spots without <laughs> playing, but they did. Their marquee wins, home victories against Boston College and Marquette. But they they will count tonight, for much, here yeah. would really strengthen that resume. Yes, but those two you mentioned are really going to count for a lot. Boston College, first or second place in the ACC, and Marquette, an excellent team. So Sam Young continuing his hot streak. He's been in double figures in three of the last four games coming in. He did not score in any of the previous four games. He has six tonight. And another turnover by Providence. They tried to feed it into the post to Colley. And he's the last to touch it at the other end. Nice hustle by Colley. Got back for Tim Welsh and prevented a layup. That's very odd, isn't it? Young goes 0 0 0 0 and then double figures three out of four games. I guess it just depends on who they're playing, what the matchups are. And of course, when Kendall is playing and Gray is playing, he doesn't get as many minutes. Young passed it up to Ramon, a deep three. Rebound on the offensive end by Kendall, who floated up an air ball. And now Providence still with the one point lead. Five minutes to go in the half. Curry the drive and the kick to Epijuku. And that's not a good omen for Providence. Tim Welsh says as Epijuku goes, typically that's how we play. And Epijuku's been off a little bit tonight. He couldn't get back to defend Cook either. Five points for Mike Cook and the lead now for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Well, transition basketball is what both of these teams would like, and they do it in different ways. Right here, Pittsburgh, this was great defense, which led to this little breakout. Cook made a pretty difficult play as he was defended well. Providence likes to run back at you. Jamie Dixon eschews the fast break basketball for the half court variety. He values every possession, does not turn the ball over. McKenzie being productive off the bench, another New York player. McKenzie missed the free throw. Herbert Hill, the follow, and he missed, and now the rebound down to Sam Young. Cook at the other end gets it to bounce in. And the Panthers are up by three. Seven points for Mike Cook. Cook, a transfer from East Carolina University, where he's a great player for them. Wanted to play in the Big East. Sat out last year as a transfer. Two years ago, averaged 15 a game for the Pirates of ECU. And the three pops in and out, then back in again for Epijuku, his first bucket. We mentioned Tim Welsh says he's the barometer. Providence is 13 and 1 this year when he scores 13 points or more. Well, they better get him 13 then. Cook 
Good use of the free hand to shed the defender, but then he missed the shot. Curry, so quick the other way. This is what the Friars like. Push it up quickly. Efejuku, after the make a moment ago, starting to heat up. Back to back threes. Providence back on top, and Jamie Dixon wants to speak about it. This is confidence. You make one, you make another one. Get it right back to the guy who has the hot hand, and that's what Providence did. Well executed right here. Curry knows his teammate is hot, and Wamey from way out in the corner. Notice how his vision is one way, but he sees his teammate in the corner. Nicely done. Juku's had some big performances in some of their biggest wins. We mentioned the win against Marchetti at 18 points in that one. He had 19 in their win against Connecticut. Tonight, college basketball primetime has that stellar SEC matchup on ESPN 9 Eastern Time. Number one, Florida faces Kentucky. Number one teams are 0-2 all-time at Kentucky. One of those victims was Florida four years ago. The Gators and the Wildcats presented by DirecTV. Also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator or satellite provider today. Florida spanked Kentucky last year at Rupp Arena on senior day. Noah and Horford were dominant. Morris is playing better for Kentucky this year. Fields for three and the tie. Well, Vance Fields has six. He averages nine and a half per game. Good three point shooter, 41% for his career. He tends to shoot better when they are in trouble. Hill set up by Ifajuku. It rolled off and Hall missed with the left. Kendall shoved Hill to get the rebound without a call. And now Curry is called for a reach in foul. His first. Rivalry week heating up with three minutes to go in the first half. Sports Center in game studios. It is finally over in Stillwater. Great game between Texas Tech and Oklahoma State. This is what sealed it for the Pokes. Mario Bogan working down low. They win it in double overtime. Complete highlights. UPS halftime report. All right, Dave, thank you. Back here in Pittsburgh, our third tie of the game. There have been seven lead changes already. Providence and Pittsburgh nodded at 30. You probably noticed the coaching staffs wearing sneakers. That's to call attention to the great organization, Coaches versus Cancers. So many coaches all over the country today wearing sneakers. Tim Welsh with the dark sneakers to match his attire. Always one of the best dressed coaches in the country. I think he goes to your Taylor. <laughs> Three pointers very much in evidence for both teams. And Judicious in their selection so far. Mm -hmm. Field with Curry right up on him. Now Ramon with a little space to shoot a three. And out of bounds, last touch by Graves. <laughs> Guys knocking each other all over the place. Typical Big East game. Well, they're letting them play under the boards. Just before he went to the last break, Kendall shoved and got away with it. At one end, it looked like Hall helped to knock Graves down there. I'm impressed with Providence's defense. I, I, I don't think of them as an outstanding defensive team. I kind of think of them as an up-tempo offense, like offense more. But they've been determined so far in this one. Yeah, they've been great defensively, giving up 70 points per game. That's 15th in the league. Only Seton Hall has been worse in scoring defense. Oh, man. <laughs> Sorry. What a great play. This kid has great feel, doesn't he? Herbert Hill. As Tim Welsh said to us yesterday, he's now being talked about by the NBA people as a possible draft pick. They've had a player drafted at Providence each of the last you know, two years in a row, rather. Brian Gomes two years ago and Marcus Douthat by the Lakers the year before that. Well, Gomes is starting for the uh, Celtics. Maybe they'll win a game sometime. I think they've lost 17 in a row yeah, now. We prefer not to bring that up. <laughs> Those of us who are fans of the green. <laughs> Tyrell Biggs with his first bucket. He averages three and a half per game, a sophomore. Now watch how they bring up their defense here. Every guy stays between his man and the basket. They have to make a tough shot. No double team, they should have. All fouled off 
the feed from Hill. It's kind of a half-hearted double team, and Tim Welsh says Hill's been managing to continue to put up big numbers despite seeing a lot more double teams lately. He is a great player. Watch this. He gets four dribbles before they come, so obviously he's going to score. And then when they do come on him, he really has the dexterity to get the ball inside. 6'11 guy can just put it in. Hall missed the free throw, just a 17th attempt of the year. Graves the handoff underneath to Biggs, and he's fouled. The foul is on Hill, his first. The UPS halftime report coming up in moments with Dave, Doug, and Tom. I'll tell you the story of UCLA's loss today in Morgantown. The Mountaineers nearly blew a huge second half lead. The Raiders working overtime and a star for Gonzaga. Suspended. Aaron Gray on the bench here with two fouls. Well, for UCLA, Darren Collison was on the bench, the starting point throughout for the Bruins, and Ben Hallen did not play in that game, even though it was a great win for West Virginia. Apparently a shoulder injury yep. for Darren Collison. He wanted to give it a go, but did not. And UCLA, a valiant effort without one of their best players, and a huge win when we talk about the NCAA tournament resumes for West Virginia. Beeline is a magician, I'm telling you. Offensive foul, the call against Brian McKenzie. Looked like Gary Prager, as he made the call, wanted a moment or two to think about it before he finally pointed it was going the other way. Well, you got to step in before he leaves the ground, and that was done, so it was a pretty easy call, really. Yep, second foul on the freshman from Brooklyn, New York, Brian McKenzie. Under a minute to go in what has been a very tight first half. Providence on the road, leading by one. Boy, Hall got up in the air too early for the rebounds. Biggs had a hand on it, but couldn't gather it in. Well, right now, the arrow is pointing towards Providence. Six-second differential on the clock. Lots of times, teams will run it all the way down and take a shot near the end of the shot clock. I'd like to see guys in these kind of situations maybe get a two-for-one sometimes. You know, we don't see that in college basketball as often as the NBA. Just get a good shot. Don't worry about the clock in McCurry this situation. Guarded very tightly by Graves. Hill, they doubled him for a moment. Now he's working on Kendall, a good defender. Huh? Traveling the call. Seventh turnover for Providence. Well, right here, while you're dribbling, you can't travel. He lands on two feet. There's, that doesn't foot change his pivot, his pivot foot. foot. I don't understand that. Well, what you, uh, you and I don't have a striped shirt, so we don't get a vote, but that was not traveling. No. Didn't look like it live, either. <laughs> we have the benefit of the replay, but you and I both made a face at each other when the call was made, because it didn't look like it live. So now Pittsburgh with a chance for the last shot of the half and the lead. Fields guarded by Curry. Fields, a floater that does not go, nor does Kendall's attempted follow. Well, we've reached halftime. Foul difficulty for Gray, a big story. He was having his way inside, but then had to go to the bench with two. And Herbert Hill has 10 for the Providence Friars, who lead by one. Now back to the studio, it's Dave Repson and the gang with the UPS Halftime Report. Thank you, Sean. What a huge win that would be for the Friars as they look to bolster their attorney resume up one on the road at Pittsburgh. Welcome in the UPS Halftime Report. Great to have you with us. Dave Revson, Tom Brennan, and Doug Gottlieb. Start you off with UCLA, number two team in the nation on the road at West Virginia. Hi Here in Pittsburgh was the first half that saw four ties and seven lead changes. As we begin the second half, it is Providence by one. Sean McDonough with Bob Wenzel. Really, the story of the first half, Coach, was Aaron Gray. He had a big start to the game, nine points in the first five minutes, but then foul trouble. Foul trouble, two fouls in the first half. He only played eight minutes, but the good part of that is he's likely to play the whole second half, and that's why coaches take their guys out with two fouls in the first half. Surprisingly, also, Providence shot nearly 49% against a team that is a gr very good defensive team. So you got to give a, a lot of credit to the Friars at the offensive end as well. 
Ray on the floor to open the second half. It'll be Providence's ball. Jeffrey McDermott to play it into Sherrod Curry. With Wayne Efejuku, Herbert Hill, and Ray Hall, who gave them some nice minutes yeah. off the bench. Nine minutes in the first half. And he rarely plays. Yeah, he's been seeing more time lately. He played 13 minutes Tuesday night, and that was his season high for a Big East game. Gives them some size in the lane. Hill. My, my, my. Boy, is he impressive, and he continues to be so. And Mike Cook got banged in the knee. They might have hit knee to knee. Cook was a little slow to get up for Pittsburgh. He's out there to start the second half with LeVance Field, Gray, Antonio Graves, and Levon Kirkland. You know, with Hill, it's uh, when he misses a shot, you're shocked you know that he actually misses. He can get a good shot every time he touches the ball if you don't double team him. Hill is 12 to lead all scores. Gray finds a wide open Cook. And that's the concern for Tim Welsh. Gray so good in the middle of that lane when you swarm him, he can find these good open three-point shooters. Pittsburgh would like to jump on Providence at the start right here. And it comes at this end. Aggressive. Trace the ball with your hand. Try not to help if you don't have to. And for Juku, sophomore from Fresh Meadows, New York. And the garbage cleaned up underneath by Jeffrey McDermott, ordinarily the guy who fills up the stat sheet, but he had a quiet statistical first half. He has five points now. Good start for the second half for him. Pittsburgh out execute you. You know, they miss not only Gray's scoring shown in the first half, but also his passing. Watch this play right here. Gray is going to receive the ball here, and when everybody comes to him, the pass will be made to the corner, and it'll be a wide open shot. Gray, when he's doubled, has the unselfishness and also the passing ability to get the ball to the right guy. Another double. Providence again playing man to man. As you mentioned in the first half, they played zone almost the entire season. Tim Welsh said Pittsburgh has hammered our zone in the past, and they've been very good against zone this year. Curry, the driving layup. Oh, man. Talk about a jet, huh? He has All 11 freshmen points. last year, right? All freshmen Big East. He's still now been in double figures in all but one game this year. As Sherrod Curry he had eight points in their win against Fairfield, the only game that he did not reach double figures. Watch how he uses this screen and just blows by everybody. No one even there to challenge him well. He is a Jet. He and Hill combined. Excellent. After Juku calls for the last foul. Graves missed a three. Hill a good rebound in traffic. He outlet to Curry as the Friars look to run. This is their largest lead. They led through much of the first half but couldn't open much of a working margin. Their largest advantage in the first half is three points. They have shown very good poise in this game. Tough place to play. And it's a young team, but as the season goes along, more and more experienced and very well coached by Tim Welsh and his staff. Curry called for an offensive foul. Well, Welsh has been the coach at Providence for nine years and, of course, comes from a coaching family. His dad was a very good coach, Jerry. And right here, excellent defense. It's hard to blame Curry on this play. It's just a good play by Pittsburgh coming across. That's the value of Kendall. Doesn't score a lot, but always in the right place defensively. Yeah, the ultimate blue guy does just about everything else but score to help the team. Gray finds his roommate Kendall underneath. The shot was short. And trouble with the dribble. Epijuku in traffic got fouled and bailed out by Antonio Graves. His second foul. Also a cleanly played game so far. Not many turnovers in the game. Both teams handling the ball well. Each team shot only four free throws in the first half. Two young coaches, relatively speaking. Jamie Dixon, 41. Tim Welsh, 45. But already a lot of success for both. Curry guarded by Fields. Epijuku off for McDermott. Out of New Rochelle, New York, as Bob mentioned, he was an All-State quarterback in high school. He's fouled by Mike Cook. 
McDermott, high school football teammate of Ray Rice, the great running back star at Rutgers. They are the best of friends that appeared for a long time. They were going to Syracuse together to play football. And Rice wound up not going to Syracuse. McDermott, once he got into senior high school basketball season, decided he'd rather play basketball. And that was good news for Pittsburgh. Hill scores in the lane, and the Friars' lead is up to six. Well, that's a good story about McDermott, and, and you know, I, I think the thing about his passing is that his vision is so good from being a quarterback looking at the first, second, and third options. He does that out here as well. Pittsburgh recruited him for basketball. Gray fouled by Hall. Jeffrey McDermott, a 6'7 sophomore. Played in a couple of teams at New Rochelle that went to the state championship game. Tim Welsh told me last night, in one of those games, they lost to Greg Collis's team up in the Carrier Dome in the state championship. Gray scores inside. The screen off the ball. Three guys were involved in that play. The screener. Oh, there's the third foul on Gray. He wants to stay in. He's telling Jamie Dixon, I'm okay. I'll play with my head. Sort of like a pitcher, you know, when he's supposed to come out of the game. And um, you never saw that with the Red Sox, did you? No. Well, no. like the pitcher who talked the manager into leaving him in. Yeah. It didn't work out that well for Pedro Martinez. <laughs> and Brady Little. Curry from the free throw line. Rebound Kendall. So Dre continues to play with the three fouls. He looked at Jamie Dixon, said, I want to stay in. Then he pointed his head as if to say, I'm smart enough to avoid fouling. Efajuku in transition. Hill the offensive rebound, and he's stripped on the way up. They got numbers. They're four on one. Gray scores. So important for him to stay in. Boy, Hill stripped. Out of bounds. Last touch by Kendall. Sean, he's not in any highlight films, but this guy, Aaron Gray, takes care of business. Fouls at one end, and then, of course, at the other end, runs the floor and finishes. Seventy-seven and seven, all time at the peak are the Panthers in their fifth season in this building. Thirty-one and six against the Big East. Their only loss this season was in overtime to Marquette. It was the only Big East team to score more than seventy points against Jamie Dixon's team this year. Providence very impressive so far. Indeed, uh, you know, and I'm impressed with Providence's defense as well. They've done a really fine job. Now Aaron Gray was out in the first half, only played eight minutes, and he has asserted himself in this half by passing the basketball. Providence doing a good job of double teaming Gray. Gray's gone to the bench for the moment with his three fouls. Hill dropped the pass out of bounds. Ten turnovers for Providence College. Gray is 13 points in 13 minutes of play tonight. You mentioned the success of Pittsburgh at home in the five seasons since this building's been open. Only Gonzaga, Southern Illinois, Wisconsin, Illinois, and Duke have a better home winning percentage. Levon Kendall with his first basket of the night ties the game. He had only two points at West Virginia on Wednesday. That's not his role. As a matter of fact, in the previous four games, he'd scored a total of 14 points. After Young had the big game the other night at West Virginia, some of the writers said, maybe he should start. <laughs> yeah, they're 21 and 3. Make a lot of changes. That's a great idea. Some made the point that Kendall averages five points in 25 minutes per game. Young averages five points per game in 15 minutes. Well, Levon Kendall, as we've seen tonight, does a lot of other things to help Pittsburgh to first place in the Big East. He plays good defense and he gets the ball to Gray. You know, they're different style players. I mean, and if you take those statistics that you mentioned and combine them, then you've got all of that production. You know, whether a guy starts or whether he comes in as a substitute, you know, it sort of depends on your style. Kendall is very experienced, plays for the Canadian national team in the summertime, understands Gray, their roommates. And then when Young comes in off the bench, they give it, he gives him a boost athletically. I think it's a great combination. Second foul on Kendall. He'll miss the first free throw. 58% from the line, one of the few weaknesses in his game. 
Uh, the Marquette coach Tom Crean pointed out about how well Kendall and Gray work together. Uh, that's as well as any big duo in the country. 15 now for Herbert Hill. Providence trying to get an important win on the road to build their NCAA tournament resume, solidify their position in the top half of the Big East standings, and perhaps make a move, who knows, for the top four. McKenzie called for the foul as he chopped down Graves. That's the top four get a first round bye at the Big East Conference tournament yep. in Madison Square Garden. So the first four places are important. And the bottom four wave goodbye and don't get to go to the garden at all in the middle eight playing the first day. So a very unusual setup for the Big East. You know, you talk about duos and Gray and Kendall come to mind. And uh, of course, the ones you're going to see tonight at Florida. Horford and Noah are outstanding. Gray back in with the three fouls. McKenzie just picked up his third for Providence. Graves gets fouled. Oh, oh, oh. How about that body? A chance for a three-point play. What great body control right here. Use to the left. Lands on one foot. Little English on that one. The two guard. He's also a senior. You know, another one of those guys, Sean, that we talked about that didn't start off as a superstar and has gotten more and more playing time and has done well with it. Graves finishes the three-point play. His first points of the ball game. The senior from Mansfield, Ohio, well below his average of 10 points per game. First lead for Pittsburgh since it was 27-24 in the first half. <laughs> McDermott had a problem with his shoe. So the officials stopped the play. The crowd doesn't like it. Already six team fouls against Providence here in the second half. I think it's a good sign for their aggression, though. You know what I mean? You don't want to get in foul trouble, but you want to play aggressively, especially on a foreign court where opponents rarely win. McKenzie guarded by Benjamin. Hill. Working on Young, and Benjamin rebounds the miss. How about Young Garden Hill, huh? Giving away three inches. Young, it rattled in and out. Gray tips in his miss. Repetitive jumping. Even though it's not high, he's up there. An 11 to 1 run now for Pittsburgh. Curry, the teardrop. Paul got a hand on the rebound. Graves the push. Three on two. And it's deflected out of bounds. Well, Sean Aaron Gray at seven feet tall doesn't get off the floor very well, but he's skillful. And on the miss, he's determined. And that leads to an easy basket. Determination by Aaron Gray. Timeout Providence. They've squandered the lead. It's now the Panthers by four. Back at the Peterson Event Center on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh, the Panthers lead by four in an entirely different game when Aaron Gray has been on the court. Pitt. Indeed it is. He gets after it on the offensive boards. His teammates find him. He jumps repetitively. He gets rebounds out of his area. 15 points in 14 minutes. That's not too bad. How about this is the year of the Aaron, Sean? Aaron Gray, Aaron Aflalo of UCLA, and Aaron Brooks of Oregon, mm. huh? That there was, was a year that there was a Sean year, but I can't uh. remember what it was. <laughs> We're still waiting for it. I hope it comes <laughs> soon. <laughs> Pittsburgh on the 11 to 1 run with the ball. Long shot wouldn't go for Young. He raced after the rebound, but Hill got there first. Sherrod Curry, Amy Ifejuku, along with Brian McKenzie, Ray Hall, and Herbert Hill for Tim Welsh's Providence College Friars. They do not turn the ball over much. Hall, oh, nice move in the lane. The freshman from Denver, Colorado. He has six. Best game of the year, huh? Best game that I've seen him play. Yes. Only played in 17 of their previous 22 and only in five of the nine Big East games they played prior to that. Gray scores over him. Paul called for the foul. Tim Welsh didn't like the call as that puts his team over the limit with 12 and a half minutes to go. 
Well, he thinks that he goes straight up right here, hands straight up, but the lower body got him a little bit. And when you're an All-American, you get an occasional call, and that was one. Three fouls on Hall. Ray's free throw nearly hit the shot clock. <laughs> When you get a big league like Providence had and then it goes away, you've got to show poise at this end, and they're not doing it right now. Mm -hmm. Way Quick too early. Three by Ifajuku that they really didn't need, and then the pass from Graves to Young that the Panthers also did not require. All right here. When he jumped up in the air, Hall came underneath him, and that's what the official mm -hmm. is looking at. I would at. say that was a no call. And I think Maybe it's just good basketball by both players. Let me see that shirt. You got is that a striped yeah. shirt you're wearing there? Sure the tie yeah. stripe, not the shirt. You <laughs> think it was a foul? <laughs> I do. He got him when he went up. Levance fields the outlet to Benjamin who lays it in and the lead widens. Four off the bench for Keith Benjamin. That was a thing of beauty. What a fast break is supposed to be. Hill has gone cold here. Foul on Pittsburgh in the rebounding action. Pittsburgh on the run. Their lead up to six at home. That is lovely. Thank you. Jared. He went to Jared. He went to Jared? Jared the Galleria of Jewelry has five times the selection of ordinary jewelry stores from the classic to the contemporary. So you'll find the perfect gift. Exquisite form. Wonderful line. Thank you. He went to Jared. Jared the Galleria of Jewelry. For more than 80 years, r and Seats, specialists in new and classic auto interiors and tops, has given customers quality service at the best price guaranteed. Ask about r and Seats and you'll find a reputation for craftsmanship and professionalism. For original and custom seat covers and interiors, vintage restorations, unbeatable convertible tops and more, call r and Seats or visit us on the web at r and Seats.com. r and Seats, 101 Newtown Road, right off the LIE in Plainview. Now, I can get all my favorite shows in my own language with IO International. I can get mis telenovelas. My sports. Novesti. My cartoons. They got you on in drama. My Bollywood movies. It's here. IO International brings you all the channels from back home that you've been waiting for. With programming from more than 16 countries, there's something for everyone. Call 866-443-9285 today and get your channels in your language. My world. My IO. Dave Revson in our Sports Center in game studios, Creighton and Southern Illinois. Top two teams in the Missouri Valley. Nate Funk, preseason Valley Player of the Year, hits there. Creighton up by five over on ESPN2. And Alabama, very damaging loss on the road at Ole Miss as they fall by six. Sean? The Alabama bubble team that really could have used a win there today. Providence. Trying for a major resume booster tonight here at Pittsburgh. The Friars now down by six at the sold out Peterson Event Center. It's been sold out for every game of its five year history. Sean McDonough with Bob Wenzel. Panthers trying to win their fifth in a row and get to 22 and three overall. They're on a 15 to three run. Well, Providence had them going for a while there, but they've let up and the defense of Pitt, their signature, has tightened considerably. 
Last foul before the break was on Levance Fields, his second. Curry split the double team, missed the floater. That's ordinarily his shot. It hasn't been very good to him tonight. That's an NBA plus three. <laughs> Talk about confidence. You miss a little shot in the lane. The next touch, you let it fly from deep. 14 for Sherrod Curry, three shy of his average. Think Curry's got the green light a little bit, Sean? Huh? He should. He's earned it. Gray. It rolled off. He was unlucky. McDermott the rebound, and now a three with Tyatt for Providence as we near the midpoint of the second half. Curry threw it right into the hands of Aaron Gray. 11 turnovers for PC. Young, strong drive, and Hall got a hand in. And it's saved by Hill with his toes almost on the baseline. Hill has gotten to shooting just turnaround jumpers here, and he needs to power it to the glass for them to get back in the game a little bit. Ramon, smallest player on the court, did a nice job blocking out Jeffrey McDermott. Then McDermott called for the over-the-back foul, his second, and they're over the limit. Eighth team foul, one and one opportunity. That's a long way to go in uh, in the one and one. Tim Welsh complaining. He says he was blocking out. And a great free throw shooter at the line. Talked to Ramon today at practice, and he's from the Dominican Republic. Here's a geography question for you. There's another country on that island. Haiti. There you I go. I heard you mention Very it to good. him. That's the only reason I knew. <laughs> Ronald telling us this morning from Santa Domingo, came to the New York City area at age nine. It's his first point of the night. The average is nine per game. 86% from the line this year. 83% for his career. Third best in pit history. Gray wow. goes back out. That is shooting, huh? I asked him if he played shortstop because there's a lot of Dominican shortstops, he said, when he was little. The lead five. Look at this, McDermott bringing it up, huh? Yeah. He really is a point forward, leading assist man in the Big East. I think they want Curry off the ball to accept some screens. McDermott trying to get his own shot. Oh. And that's one of the things Tim Welsh said when we visited with him yesterday. He needs to look for his own offense a little bit more. He has seven now. Boy, that was a powerful play, huh? They've got elements. I'm telling you, you know, they, they, they're going to make a run for this NCAA tournament deal. They've got some games at home coming up. Benjamin to Ramon curling for a three. Rebound Hall. Out of bounds, last touch by Young. Well, you said McDermott needed to take it on his own a little bit. He listened to his coach here. Nice hesitation. This is a left-handed dribble the whole way. And his body is so wide that Benjamin couldn't stay with him. Dwayne Williams, the freshman, Marietta, California. Inside it goes to Hill. He scores, and Providence is within one with 9.20 to go. 17 right on his average for Herbert Hill. The only senior on the team. They have only one junior, Charlie Birch, who is out with a back injury tonight. Speaking of tonight, college basketball primetime has an incredible SEC matchup. Number one Florida, the defending national champs in Rupp Arena to take on Kentucky, of course, Florida, coached by Providence College graduate Billy Donovan, a star on their 1987 team that went to the Final Four under Rick Pitino. They're going to have a reunion in May in Providence of that team. Coach Pitino, Billy Donovan, and many of the others on the coaching staff and the players will be back. That's pretty good stuff. They also went to the Final Four in 1975, right? Ernie DiGregorio and Marvin Barnes. So Providence College, an illustrious history. And not only that, they were sort of the founding fathers of this league. Dave Gavitt, of course, had the idea to form the Big East. And this year is the 25th anniversary of the Big East tournament being played at Madison Square Garden. Now it's been played three other places, yes? Providence, Hartford, and the Carrier Dome. Yep. Mm -hmm. Your alma mater. And Gray, the lead had been cut to one. They go to the right spot. 19 now for Gray. A 9 out of 13 from the floor. And you know why it looks so easy for him? He does his work before he gets it. Then when he gets it, just finishing is the easy part. 
Wayne Williams shut off on the drive but got it to Hill and it rolled off. Gray managed to get it out to Fields three on two Pittsburgh. Benjamin corner jumper well short. Now Williams trying to push the Friars the other way. Williams was the point guard for the four games that Curry was suspended and he did a terrific job. We're very confident with him on the floor yep. in possession of the ball as he is now. At 18 against Villanova when Curry was in foul trouble also. And Williams for three. It rattles out. All at inside position. He knows Gray's right there. Hill. Boy, Hall's been in the lane for a month and finally gets called for a three second violation. <laughs> in for a month, huh? <laughs> Well, if you can get away with it, that would be very, very good. Paul's in there right now, and you can count if you want. 1,001, 1,002, 1,012. It was about an eight-second violation. That's what Jamie Dixon said. What took you so long? I guess in Denver, the, you know, the air is thinner, the lane is wider. Is that? I love you coaches, too. Even when you get the calls, you're mad. <laughs> you got the call. <laughs> Gray, that's much too easy. Beautiful feed from Mike Cook. 21 for Aaron Gray and piling up quickly. That's why he is the preseason Big East Player of the Year. Scores easy baskets when his team is struggling. Imagine Paul in the lane again for a while and great hands by Kendall is driven. Imagine the night. Gray might be having had he not been saddled with the foul difficulty. Yeah, only eight minutes in the first half. Providence on the ropes here. Gray had a roll off. His career high is 25 points. That was in January against Notre Dame. January a year ago, of 06, last season. Aaron Gray does his work early, Sean, and when he does, notice he catches the ball inside the paint. And, of course, when he gets going, his teammates find him again in the paint. The easy lob. That's good stuff. His season high is 24, which he has accomplished twice against Oklahoma State. That was in one of their three losses this year, one of the two that came in overtime. He also had 24 against the Huskies of Northeastern. Remember that game also he had 20 rebounds against UConn in that game. This guy puts up the numbers. There it is. 19 minutes, 21 points. He has six of their 10 field goals this half. He has an effect on winning. There's no doubt about that. When your team is struggling and you can get it in and get an easy basket once in a while, that separates him from a lot of the other players in this league. And Frankly, Roy Hibbert at Georgetown is becoming the same way now. Georgetown is on a roll. They win today their seventh straight. They ended Marquette's eight-game winning streak. Curry guarded by Fields. It's Curry, Williams, Epijuku, McDermott, and Hill for Providence. They have 12 seconds to shoot. Good D. Refajuku nicely executed. Hill missed a short one. Hill has gone cold here in the second half at the worst possible time for Providence. And that is rare for him. Cook missed a three, and Kendall just shoved Efajuku out of the way to get the rebound, and John Cal had the call. Third foul on Kendall, and a timeout. Pennsylvania like so much of the country in the deep freeze the temperature did not get out of the 20s again here today Pittsburgh setting the pace in the Big East and Providence sixth right now in a very tightly packed middle of the pack in the Big East I think most of the coaches all the coaches I've talked to Bob you've done a lot of Big East games this year think Pittsburgh is the best team yeah 
I don't and, think there's uh, think about that. And I think a lot of them also believe Georgetown and Marquette might be right below. And then everybody else, four to about 10 or 11, seems to be very even. Yes, I, I agree. And uh, Pittsburgh and Jamie Dixon are going to have to play both of those teams, Georgetown and Marquette, on the road down the stretch here. And they are 7-1 and one on the road so far. So a good home and away team, obviously. And they've won their last five on the road. Have the Panthers. Pitt's deal is what will their seed be in the NCAA. Nice move over Young. Pardon me, Bob. Three-point game now. Give Providence credit. A couple times they've been in danger with the crowd into it, and Pittsburgh seemingly on a roll, and they've answered. Change of defense also right here. Extended zone defense. That's they will invite the pass to the paint. Two-three zone. Guys are moving quickly. Pitt's doing the right thing, probing. Gray, the face-up elbow jumper, a little bit long. It got tipped nicely by Young to Graves. Nice execution, huh? Always with his own. Tim Welsh is frustrated. They stopped the first shot. They got hurt on the boards. Providence, a good rebounding team. They're plus eight per game. Boy, Hill just can't buy one now. He's three out of nine in the second half. He scores that time as McDermott got it back to him. Hill has bounce and length. And he's come up short on a couple of shots that he normally makes. I don't know if it's fatigue or being banged around during the course of this game. It's been physical. you got to bang with Gray all day long. That takes a lot out of your bounce. Wow. Uh, Young wide open. Tim Welsh is trying to change defenses to find the answer to Gray. Gray found the answer. And Young is eight. That's why he's so valuable. Tim Welsh told us last night that he was afraid to use zone too much against them because of that very thing you just saw. Yep, Gray gets in the middle of the zone. You collapse on him. He finds somebody wide open, frequently behind the three-point line. Providence done a pretty good job defending the three tonight. But yep. Pittsburgh's made them pay for it by pounding it inside. Sign of a good team, huh? They do both. Yep. Pittsburgh has only four threes. That's the fifth three of the night for Providence, and 17 points now for Sherrod Curry, right on his average. Can you say he made the last nine points against their game against Cincinnati? Looks like he's tuning in right now. When the ball goes to the high post, the wing guys have to go down and cover the blocks. They haven't done it in the last two possessions. Two-point game under four minutes to go here in Pittsburgh. Sam Young defended by Ifejuku. His pass deflected by McDermott. But Graves got it back. He's fouled by Hill. That might be the key point in the game right there. It looked like Providence had taken the ball away with a chance to tie or take the lead. And on the ricochet, it wound up in the hands of Graves. And they'll have a chance for the three-point play when we come back with the strength. Pittsburgh loves it. Knock it out. started selling auto insurance I I got a little pressure to use them a little I'm State Farm Agent Amy Kaplan and this is a true story I didn't pressure you I just I think blood is thicker than water so with some of the staff we switched from State Farm to him the service is horrible well, he wouldn't call me back and he's my brother so I called him and he was ready to switch back State Farm treated us like family yeah better 
great service and great rates, it's all here. Nobody takes care of you like State Farm. Call an agent today. Like a good neighbor? State Farm is there. Sweet ride. Yeah. That was amazing. Let's do it. Since you can get rewards with thank you points from your city credit card and for your everyday banking at Citibank, it's easier to get the rewards you want. Call 888-511-CITI. Dave Revson in our Sports Center in-game studios. Game of the day to this point in case you missed it. UCLA and West Virginia. Deshaun Butler hitting here as the Mountaineers pull it off 70 to 65. Full highlights analysis, college game day next. Big win for West Virginia. Get them the 19 and 5 overall here. It's Pittsburgh by four with a free throw upcoming. We'll take a look at our Cisco game track. Both teams scoring in the paint for Pittsburgh, primarily Gray for Providence Hill. Hill and Curry have combined for 36 of Providence's 63, uh, excuse me, 59 points. And Aaron Gray, maybe if he played 40 minutes, he'd have 40 points if you would extrapolate from those numbers. That's pretty good. 22 points in 21 minutes. Mr. Gray has an effect on winning. Graves trying to complete the three-point play. Foul while scoring right before the break. 66% for the year from the line. That was a big sequence, Bob. Looked yep. like Providence had the ball after a good defensive stop. Chance perhaps to tie it or take the lead. Instead, they're down by five. Sometimes you get those fortunate bounces when you are at home. Turning points. Let's see if Curry can come back and get some heroics like he's been used to doing this year for this team. Guarded by Graves. All eight of Graves' points have been here in the second half. He had a big second half in their win at Villanova. One week ago Monday, Ronald Ramon called for the foul, and that gets Jamie Dixon's team over the limit. Seventh team foul in the second personal on Ramon, Jr. It'll be interesting to see what Providence does on the next possession. They've gone to zone, which is their staple, but they have not done well in zone. Pitt's got some easy baskets. I suspect that Tim Welsh knows that, obviously, and will go to the man-to-man, -man, which has been more effective, oddly enough, in this game for them. Fajuko makes his first free throw, 81%. That's the season, good. which is two out of ten from the floor tonight. Had those back-to-back -back threes, and that's it. He was six for six from the line in their game against Pittsburgh last year. He had 12 points to Defa Juku against the Panthers. A lot of guys who have good numbers have less than their average against this particular defense. Pittsburgh holds people down. It is man to man. The problem says 60 points with more than three minutes to go. The Panthers have held four Big East teams under 50 this year. Gray the miss. And Providence able to corral that loose ball. Down by four, it's Sherrod Curry. I'm impressed with Hall's defense on Gray. He's been muscling him. Not afraid at all. Not intimidated. And McDermott with about eight inches on Ramon. And a timeout called by Providence. Tim Wells didn't like the way that possession was going. Well, they faced a deficit greater than this with less time on Tuesday night, their last game at home. Providence was down by eight with about a minute and a half to go. Sherrod Curry took over the game, back-to-back three-pointers to get them within two, and then fouled while shooting with 14 seconds to go. He made the teardrop and the free throw. Nine straight points to give Providence the lead. Chance to win it for Cincinnati. John Williamson's shot rolled off. And the Friars held on for a very important win to get them above 500 in the conference, 71-70. It would have been devastating had they lost to the last place team at home in a situation like that. Cincinnati is better than their record indicates, but uh, they've given a lot of people trouble, but you cannot lose that kind of a game if you expect to get to the tournament. And they came up on the right side of it. Well, apparently all their fans weren't faithful. A lot of people were filing out of the Dunkin' Donuts Center and missed the exciting Providence comeback. No timeouts left for 
Providence. See Steve DeMeo there, the associate head coach, talking with the official. They're very excited about next year, not only this great young nucleus that we've been talking about tonight coming back, but they have Randall Hankey, a 6'11 junior, redshirting this season. He averaged 13 points and five rebounds per game last year, led the nation in field goal percentage. And they have Jeff Xavier sitting out Ooh. as a transfer from Manhattan, where he averaged 16 per game last year. Player. Well, he's a very good player. He had yes. 31 points in Manhattan's win against Maryland in the NIT. That's big. That's Tim Welsh, so that's like bringing two blue chip recruits. Plus, they have a top 50 signee among their incoming recruiting class. So they're good now. They should be very good next year. Agreed. With all of these four guys, sophomores, starting all these games, getting all of this experience, they're going to be good at the guard spot. And Hanky will take Hill's place. Oh, boy. Epijuku turned it over to Fields. Off to Gray. And he was fouled by Epijuku and an intentional foul call. I don't know why. The Hill went up. Epijuku went up to try to block the shot and hit him on the arm. Just because he falls down hard doesn't make it an intentional foul or a flagrant foul. Bad ball handling right here. And we're going to focus on the foul. Unselfish play. Right here. Maybe it was for the shove from behind. Yeah, what Epijuku did was fine. But who'd they give the oh, foul yeah. to? Oh, yeah. I think you're right. It's on Hall. No, they gave it to Epijuku. Really? So it wasn't for that shove in the back. Well, when you're seven foot, you're running the length of the floor, and you go down. Let's hear it. Quickly, he got up also. I thought the push was from behind by Hall. And I agree with you. I don't, I don't see anything well, that Wayne did. Just that contesting the shot. And as yeah. you said, when you're seven feet and you hit the floor, it's going to look hard. I don't blame Tim Welsh. I mean, that's at this juncture of the game, too. Let's see if we can see the push from behind right here. See, that's intentional. Uh, they didn't call the foul on him. Yeah. Cook has it rolled off. He shot the free throws because Gray went out of the game. And Ramon about came to make a miraculous through. recovery, it seems, from the end of the bench. They got Gray, the 59% free throw shooter, out of the game. Walking to check back in. Well, apparently Gary Prager pointed in the wrong direction the first time. He has changed his own call and now said it's Pittsburgh's ball. And he got it right upon his own further review. It went off Brian McKenzie. Out. They couldn't get it in. We'll be right back here in Pittsburgh Monday night for the first part of our big Monday doubleheader presented by Bud Light. Louisville is in town to take on the Panthers. And then the rematch of that memorable triple overtime game earlier this season between Oklahoma State and Texas. Another chance to get a look at Kevin Durant. With 37 on the Cowboys in their first meeting, matched by Mario Bogan's 37 points. Durant is unbelievable. Once in a lifetime player, says Rick Barnes, his coach, former coach of Providence, now the Texas mentor. Multi skilled. Can play every position on the floor. Gets numbers like you cannot believe. And I'm sure you've seen him a great deal. Well, I know great Boston where the folks are hoping the ping pong balls will bounce the Celtics <laughs> way. The debate is if they both come out, would you take Durant or Greg Oden? Yeah, right. That's a good question. Depends on what you need, I guess, huh? Pittsburgh with the full shot clock will run some time. We're down to 220 remaining. They've been tested throughout the night by Providence and Aaron Gray turned it over the ninth committed by the Panthers. Normally a reliable passer especially to his roommate disconnects on that one. Providence still very much 
in it and able to do something. Watch Curry running off screens here. McDermott fouled on a little bump by Graves. It'll be a one and one opportunity for Jeffrey McDermott, who's not a particularly good free throw shooter, 55%. You now, sometimes guys have bad numbers, but they're clutch type guys. Mm -hmm. He strikes me as that type. One out of two from the line tonight. Oh, he's making you look smart again, <laughs> coach. A lot of iron on that one, though, huh? Rolled around, touched every part of the rim. And the tournament after a slow start has reached double figures for the 15th time in the last 16 games. He had just three points in the first half. Got a lot of iron with that second one and then went over the back of Ramon. Ah. So they send an excellent free throw shooter to the line for two with a double bonus. Yep, Ramon at 86% on the year. Jamie Dixon directing guys as to who he wants on the free throw lane and who he wants back. He wants the big guys back. Both Kendall and Gray will be back to protect against any long pass or any run out. Ooh, a rare miss by Ramon from the free throw line. Well, two point possession, uh, two, two possession game, no, no matter how you look at it for the guys in the black uniforms. They don't have to rush. A three would obviously be nice, but at this juncture of the day, game, frequently, defensive team doesn't want to foul, so you are able to drive the ball to the basket well. Three points for Ramon tonight, the lead five for Pittsburgh as we tick down to two minutes remaining. This is the guy who should have it. Curry guarded by Ramon. Curry steps into a three that rattled out about a quarter of the way down and popped out to Kendall. Tenth rebound of the night for Levon Kendall, the fifth year senior from Vancouver, British Columbia. Graves is wide open for three. It pops up and goes in. No, 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 no. Oh, good shot. <laughs> no use of the clock on that particular one. Providence's three popped in and out. Pittsburgh stayed down. If Ajuku scores, he has nine. The game six. Ramon. Need to foul. Oh, they turn it over. Graves threw it right to Curry. And he lays it in. It's a four-point game with a minute to go. And Pittsburgh pressed again by Providence. They get it over, and Fields will pull it out. Got a foul. Fields dribbling through the traffic. Clock is the enemy. And Curry does foul Fields. He's at 75.5% for the season from the free throw line. He hasn't been to the line tonight. Providence and Pittsburgh. Providence has lost six in a row head-to-head -to, -head to the Panthers. Sean McMahon and Bob Wenzel. Game day from Lexington. Coming up next, college game day driven by State Farm, anchored by Reese Davis and company. The sophomore Fields made the first. Good leader, huh? Very good. Took over for Paul Krauser, who was a mainstay in this lineup for many years and has done an excellent job in that role. We're looking for reasons why this program's been successful. Brandon Knight, the point guard, handed that off to Krauser. He's handed it off to Fields. Good intelligence for 12 years. Time running out now on Providence. They've fought valiantly tonight. They're going to need some more last second heroics, the likes of which they got in their last game against Cincinnati. McDermott got in trouble. It was kicked out of bounds by Kendall, the former soccer goalie in high school. And tough to score on a 6-9 goalie. Time now to check out our Jordan Brand takeover player of the game. Wasn't a tough choice tonight. <laughs> Aaron Gray, big numbers and uh, not so big minutes. 17 to shoot, 23 left in the game. They lob it in the hill and he was being held. Ramon called for the foul, his fourth. 
So Herbert Hill goes to the line. I think Ray's coming back in right here. They need rebounding because Hill is not a great free throw shooter. Jamie Dixon does not want a chance, a missed free throw, and then a basket at this juncture. That's the reason for this substitution. And Gray in for Benjamin. It's the last one and one, the ninth team foul, and Hill just 58% from the free throw line for the year. One out of two tonight, now two out of three. Another 20 point game for Herbert Hill. Eighth time this season he's reached that mark. He is having a great career and uh, really the anchor of their team inside. Didn't have a great second half. I think he got bounced around a little bit, but really a heck of a player. I believe another foul wow. against Pittsburgh. Gray was tangled up with McDermott. And they have the foul on Gray, his fourth. And now it'll be a two shot opportunity for McDermott. The exact reason that Gray came into the game worked out badly. Right around the right side, McDermott slips behind, gets in front of him, and a little tangle up. Spread eagle. That's great hustle by McDermott. Notice how he slid right inside Gray. Gray was sleeping. That's the 10th team foul, so two shots for McDermott. 55%. Unfortunately, with Providence here, they have a lot of good free throw shooters, but the last two to go to the line, Hill and McDermott, are two of their worst. Great thing, of course, for Providence is they are scoring while the clock is stopped. And this could make it a one possession game if McDermott could make the free throw. Both teams have subs at the table. Second one pops out, and now Hill is over the back of Aaron Gray. That is the fourth on Herbert Hill. Not such a bad play right here. He doesn't foul out, so he's still in the game. He sends Aaron Gray, who's not a great free throw shooter, to the line, and very little time goes off the clock. So fouling on an offensive rebound on a missed free throw, not such a bad strategy for Tim Welsh. Gray came in at 59.4% for the year, and he's one out of four from the line tonight. Two shots, both teams in the double bonus. Pretty good play, huh? Yeah. Providence has no timeouts left. On a made basket, however, the clock stops. Mm -hmm. So if Providence scores, they don't have to call a timeout to stop the clock. Gray swish the second. Cook checks in. Gray will go out. Tim Welsh's Friars down by five. And whatever they do, it needs to be quick. Curry goes right by Ramon. Kendall over to help, and he gets called for the foul. That is an example of what I'm talking about. People try to guard the three. The drive to the basket is available. If you're down five, you've got to get a three and a two, huh? So not a bad play by Curry. Clock stops again. Four fouls on Kendall. Curry's the best free throw shooter in the Big East. 89.6%, so wouldn't you know. Fatigue. Boy, they've hurt themselves here, too, for the last five from the line on these last three trips. Hill is out. And quickness, yeah, quickness comes in, right? You know, try to try to get a steal on the inbounds. Foul immediately if that doesn't happen. Yeah, Hill has four fouls, so they don't want him to have to foul. Right. Williams can foul with room to spare. Ooh, Graves fouled. Epichuku and McDermott both right there. Graves very nearly walked. I think that's what Tim Welsh might be arguing about. Pittsburgh on Big Monday, Louisville, 7 o'clock. We hope you'll be with us. Big game. And a non-conference game, also on ESPN next Saturday at 2 o'clock Eastern time against Washington. And some big ones down the stretch. The team's right behind them in the standings at Georgetown at Marquette. Tough schedule down the end for them. Washington, not a team that plays well on the road. Big upset. Of course, in the uh, Pac-10 today, Arizona wins at Oregon. They needed it. They, they did. Revealing. You're right. The resume builder. 12 points for Graves all in this half. Curry goes to the bucket. 
Locked out of bounds by Kendall. You surprised they didn't shoot a three there with so little yeah, time left? Yeah, yeah, You know, I, game's over now. Right inbound to right underneath the basket, a held ball, and it goes over to Pittsburgh. So that should cement it. Valiant effort, I think, by that guy's team. They came in here, one of the toughest, the toughest place in the league to play in terms of nobody having success here. They played very, very well defensively. Gave it all their heart, did the Friars. Pittsburgh cements its ability. I think they're going to be a number one seed if they keep playing like this. Boy, they have depth, don't they? Nine guys can start. Jamie Dixon rotates those guys in there, even with Gray out. He preserved him for the second half, and Gray played remarkably well in the second half. So it'll be six straight wins, six straight years with 10 Big East wins or more. And with 20 overall wins or more. And their best record ever in the Big East is 13 and 3. They have a good chance to surpass that this year. Graves a couple of misses. McDermott takes a deep three. And that's the game. Aaron Gray, the star, 22 points and seven rebounds. And Jamie Dixon knew Providence would give them a battle tonight, and they did. Sherrod Curry led PC with 20. Hill also had 20. Final score is Pittsburgh 74 and Providence 68. Coming up next is College Game Day, driven by State Farm. The postgame extra for this game can be found on ESPN News. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now for Bob Wenzel and our crew, Sean McDonough saying, so long for Pittsburgh, let's go to Lexington. Billy Donovan returns to what used to be his old Kentucky home. He trips off 14 straight against SEC team, 15 in a row overall. And Joe Kim Noah said one of the reasons he returned was to terrorize Kentucky fans for another year. But he is wading into a sea of blue tonight. It's been a day long. Welcomes in the number one team in the land, the Florida Gators. We are ready for a bluegrass style house party. To College Game Day, driven by State Farm. If the nation's longest winning streak is to come to an end tonight, a couple of Wildcats will have to come up with huge games. Joe Crawford, averaging over 18 points per game in SEC play, third in the league, and Randolph Morris, he's got a sizable task dealing with Joe Kim Noah and Al Horford and that Gator front line. And Florida coming up in just a little while from Rupp Arena. And the Big Blue Nation is out in force. Over 23,000 will be inside tonight. They say there is no better big game crowd in America than these blue clad fans at Kentucky. Glad to have you along. Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. Everybody's here. Hubert Digger and Jay. Dickie B. Hey, hosting number one in 
Kentucky doesn't get to do that very often because they usually are number one. No number one team. Two have tried to come in and get a victory in Rupp. Haven't been able to do it, including the Gators once. I'll tell you one thing. You talk about number one. I was here in 2003 when Florida was number one, and they were blowing out because they were in all of being number one. They're not in all of being number one. They have placed being number one right now. This is a different Florida team. Joseph Noah, he brings energy. He almost likes the kind of response he's going to get from the crowd. I'll tell you one thing. Kentucky has the most passionate fans you can ever talk about in college basketball. Their expectations sometimes run wild, but they're going to have their A game today. What? Why in the world should their expectations not run wild? They've won 1,944 games more than anybody else. But nobody has won more championships than UCLA. The Bruins had a date on the road in Morgantown. UCLA played in the title game last year against Florida. Ben Howland and the Bruins without Darren Collison. Collison's replacement, Russell Westbrook, loses it. Alex Ruoff to Joe Alexander. Mountaineers grab the lead. And then Ruoff would knock down the long three, Jay. Ruoff had 18. This is a very good three-point shooting team that spreads the floor. Then they cut to the basket to soften you up. West Virginia was really working hard on the offensive end. Deshaun Butler as the Mountaineers close to half on a 10-0 run. Then Westbrook would lose the handle. Ruoff was just the three would be there for the putback. I'll tell you, they do a great job. John Beeline gets the maximum out of his people. Think about what he lost in 19-5. It's unbelievable. And the Mountaineers continue to play well. Run the floor. Young with the layup. Mountaineers up by 18. 45-28. Ted Talkington would finish, Digger. Yeah, they get it going now. When you look at this run, this is where they go up big. 47-28. But UCLA comes back for the 15-zip run to cut it to four. With and nine left. And the way they would do that was behind the excellent play of their leader, Aaron Oklahoma. Well, actually struggling in this game last year. He had 27 points when UCLA was struggling without Darren Collins. He couldn't find consistency in terms of getting into the paint. Seven-point game. Bruins out in front of the pack again. of Flavo with the finish. Bruins pulled it within five. West Virginia would hang on. Check out the telestration here, JB. Well, you can see curling off this little down screen, and nobody picks him up, gets all the way to the rim, and knocks it down with the foul. That is great offense by West Virginia, set up by the fact that they can shoot three so effectively. And a legitimate court storming, by the way, and they played John Denver's country roads. Not sure they could storm the court here tonight, or that they should. Last couple of seasons, the Bruins have had trouble against West Virginia. Lost by four after a big rally a season to go with Pauly, and they lost by five today. Well, I'll tell you one thing right now. You talk about UCLA playing without Darren Collison. Certainly that was a big plus for West Virginia. But let's give certainly West Virginia credit for their execution and how efficient they were. I think also, guys, what about the 10 a.m. wake-up call? That's probably going to be tough UCLA time. Yeah, they I know that, that call. Hey, North Carolina got the wake-up call early. Pretty much put Wake Forest to sleep. Tar Heels were honoring the 1982 National Championship team and the 57 squad. Michael Jordan was on the 82 team. In case you forgot, <laughs> he and Dean Smith there, Ty Lawson, Tyler Hansbro, North Carolina up by five. Ray Sean Terry had a huge day here. Yeah, he did. He had 23 points, eight rebounds, and when he plays well, Carolina's at his best. Michael approving Lawson when the runner Brandon Wright there, Digger. He get an inside, and yet you got to give Wake Forest credit. They come right back with a 13th of the run and go up 21-20. And again, another member of that championship team worthy of proving. Wright with the slam dunk. He had all seven of his field goal attempts. Marcus Kenyard getting in on the action, Jake. Well, everybody get in there on the action. The UNC starter shot 24 of 35. That's just under 70%. And a great move down low. The most lopsided win in series history for North Carolina, 104-67. Well, you know, you think about it. What a time to play that Michael Jordan in the house, the team 50 years ago. Not a time for Wake Forest. You look at the margins here. Under the freshman from the last few seasons, Jordan won that title for them as a freshman hitting the game when he shot against Georgetown. Hey, you talk about freshmen. Brandon Wright to me, along with Tyler Hansbro, they're going to join, I think, three others on an all-ACC team when you think about Singletary and Dudley as well and Fort. Ohio State has some pretty good freshmen, too. Greg Oden being the leader of the pack. Buckeyes taking on Purdue. Purdue down by a couple trying to take advantage of Oden being into foul trouble with 
three fouls. Terrence Crump going to the bucket to tie the game at 39, and then Crump's going to go by four guys, Dick. I'll tell you one thing. He can really handle the basketball. Got the goal really well, but the Buckeyes are just too strong. Ron Lewis finding Oden for the slam, and David Teague would lead him back. Well, David Teague had 17 points. He is a good shooter when he gets his feet set. He can be streaky, but he knocked that one down. And Purdue was playing well at Ohio State. Tied at 52, Teague one on two, and he got nothing but Aaron. Ron Lewis to go the other way, Digger. Yeah, he makes this transition game. They go on 11 of four run at the end of this game, get this big win. Nine in a row for the Buckeyes, who would finish the final eight minutes on a 17-5 run. Odin with the block, 14 points, nine rebounds and a couple of blocks. Ohio State wins it by seven. Iowa and Wisconsin, Magic trying to keep pace. Top two scores in the league, Elonzo Tucker, Adam Haluska. Tucker goes over the 2,000 point mark for his career. Michael Finley, the only other Badger to do that. Then Haluska would finish with 16, trying to keep Iowa in it. Well, you know, Alan Haluska, he leads the Big Ten in scoring. Got a steal here, finishing in the lane, but he had a tough time tonight. Had to take 20 shots just to get 16 points. And Wisconsin would answer, Brian Butch contributed. Not a bad three-point shooter, but let me tell you this. My BBBI, it's spitting out right now. Every week it changes. I got Tucker now moving past the ramp. The National Player of the Year. Change every week. <laughs> 74 to 62. Tucker on the finish as the Badgers continue to win. So these are the two best teams in the Big Ten up to this point. Both with sparkling resumes, both in the top six in the RPI. So these two teams, the class of the Big Ten, team that couldn't get it done against the Big East Bowl was UCLA. Now, Jake, UCLA didn't have Darren Collison. So what? Impact, if any, would this have on the Bruins as they try to compete for one of the number one seeds? Well, I don't think it's going to have a great impact on them, Reese. I still think if it ended today that UCLA would be one of the four number one seeds along with Ohio State, Wisconsin, or excuse me, along with Wisconsin, Florida, and North Carolina. They have played one of the toughest schedules in America. They've played very well against it. And I do believe if they had Collison in the lineup today, they would have won at West Virginia. Now, you can't play this what-if game, but Westbrook was not the class of Collison in that ball game. A lot of turnovers. He went 1 for 11 from the field. Collison would have done a better job. But we got to give West Virginia credit for winning this game. And what this does now is put them, this is a resume win. They lose to Pittsburgh by 13 at home the other night. They come back and get this big win against UCLA. And what it does by their resume, yes, they're 8-4 to the Big East. They're in the upper half. But when you look at what this game does for them, their RPI is at 46. It'll probably go up. They had a win over Villanova, but this win over UCLA is so important, it sort of secures now an NCAA bid for West Virginia. So West Virginia secures a bid. Other teams trying to secure a number one seed. In your mind, saw both Ohio State and Wisconsin win. Who's the best team in the Big Ten? Uh, I don't think it's a question. It has to be Wisconsin. I mean, they're absolutely terrific defensively. I love the way they're getting points in the paint by Brian Butch and Jason Chappelle. And look about Orlando Tucker. He's Big Ten Player of the Year, possibly Player of the Year in the nation. And what I like about this team right now is they're starting to shoot the three-point shot particularly well. 44% in their last two games. This is a place where they were struggling early in the Big Ten season. Well, you know, I love Love Wisconsin. Love the way they play. But I feel on a neutral floor, I got to give the edge to the big guy. Greg Oden on a neutral floor, I think will be the difference maker, and I think they will beat Wisconsin. I think also they got to go to play them at Ohio State. Edge certainly to the Buckeyes there. And then when they play on a neutral in a Big Ten tournament, Edge Buckeyes. I think the big guy, Hubert, he is going to be such a factor come tournament time. I agree with and you. I don't think they have an answer for him. On the but they're not they shooting well from three-point range. They can pull him away from the basket. That's the one advantage that Wisconsin has. Big guys out on the perimeter. Yeah, I buy that to a certain degree. But I still think that that club is starting to learn how to use him, how to get him touches. And Michael Conley, you said it last week, I think Michael Conley is as good as a point guard in penetration as you can find. Well, you guys have been talking about big guys and the two toughest big guys, some would say, in the land to handle as a tandem. The two for Florida, Al Horford and Joe Kim Noah, but they haven't been invincible so far this season. In late November against a very good Kansas team, Julian Wright, 
see he had a big day a little bit later on. Kansas winning in overtime against the Gators, 82 to 80. That's one of the Florida losses. Then, without Corey Brewer, who missed some time with Mono, Gators went to Florida State and fell to the Seminoles on December 3rd. But since then, Florida has not lost since. 15 straight wins. So that nation's longest winning streak, and they have a four-game winning streak against Kentucky. Should the Gators be able to win tonight? They would match Tennessee's run in the 1970s, the only SEC team ever to win five in a row against Kentucky. Those were the great Bernie King, Ernie Grunfeld team. Florida's going to have an opportunity to do that tonight. You're going to call the game with Dan Schulman. What's the key tonight, Florida and Kentucky? Well, you know, I think the keys in this basketball game is very obvious. I think Morris first of all, and Perry, a Perry inside have to have big games to neutralize certainly Nolan Horford. They got the best front court in basketball. I think everybody will agree they got the best starting lineup in basketball. They are great chemistry. Joe Crawford's going to have to have his A game, and they have to avoid lapses. Kentucky's had lapses during courses of games. Up 17, they blow a 17-point lead to Georgia. They're down 14, they come back, and they beat Arkansas. They're up 28 on South Carolina. It gets down to five. If they have a lapse against Florida, lights out. This Florida team is special. There's not a starting five in America as good. They got a point guard who can handle. They got a three-point shooter who's shooting 68 percent from the three. And the front court is unbelievable. Well, these people don't want to hear that. What they want to see is Kentucky pull off the upset. Dick's going to call the game with Dan Schulman. Always good to see you. We'll hear from Dick later on tonight. Ramel Bradley, one of those guys that will have to keep Kentucky from falling into one of those lulls. Excellent free throw shooter. Florida and Kentucky coming up on ESPN. ESPN HD at the top of the hour. Still to come on college game day, Florida trying to repeat out of Billy Donovan, keep them on edge. You'll find out as the Gator coach is wired for sound. And the Southeastern Conference outside of these two teams, a complete mess, particularly in the West. We'll show you how the standings continue to be turned upside down in the Southeastern Conference and in the Big East. Teams trying to find out who's the second best team in the conference and improve their seed. We'll sort it out in a bit. for the three. It's good. There is just something magical about this rivalry. Behind the back, he got it. Showtime! Showtime! The definition of competition. Rivalry Week, presented by Cisco, continues tonight at 9 on ESPN. Everything's getting faster, sexier, and yet less expensive. So, why not cars? Say hello to the G6 sedan, G6 coupe, and G6 hardtop convertible. G6, one of the fastest growing brands in America. Pontiac, designed for action. Solutions from Siemens can be found everywhere by making buildings more efficient, communications better integrated, medical centers more advanced, power plants and transportation more modern. We're turning dreams into reality.
Every offseason, you start all over. Nike Shocks A Rod, only at Dick Sporting Goods. College Game Day is driven by State Farm. Great service, great rates. It's all here. Nobody takes care of you like State Farm. And in part by Siemens. And Pontiac, the official performance machines of the NCAA. Cats getting set to move into the Taj Mahal of training facilities, the Cramp Center, that's their locker room, and they hope that such amenities will lead them to capturing yet another Siemens trophy, which goes to the national champion in college basketball. This Rupp Arena crowd just outside the venue of the court wound up, lathered up, their Cats 10 and 2 against visitors in the AP Top 5 and 2 and 0 oh against team ranked number 1. Arizona and Oregon in the Pac-10. Plenty of duck along in the house of Andre Shaw, Joey Harrington, Phil Knight on hand. Late in the first half, Aaron Brooks, who beat Arizona the first time this season, releases the shot. But there's a second left on the shot clock, but the whistle sounded before the shot goes off the rim. So they get together and try to sort it out, Jim. Yeah, just a very odd situation with the officials, but they figured it out, and there was an inbounds play. Put 2.7 back on the clock, and when the ball touches no one, it goes back to the original spot, so the Ducks get it back. Bryce Taylor, nicely executed inbounds play, Ducks up by 10 at the half. In the second half, under four minutes to go, about the seven and a half minute mark, it's when Oregon started wilting, and Arizona started taking over behind Chase Buddy. Well, Chase Buddinger, just a freshman, but he had 30 points on 12 of 21 shooting to go along with 10 rebounds. He took over. Arizona had the two-point lead. Brooks threw up the air ball. Marcus Williams goes up strong, gets it to go. Cats up by four, and then more from Buddinger. Buddinger, a terrific catch-and-shoot player, and he was really looking for his shot all game long. Became a real go-to guy. And then a terrific pass here to Tawan Porter off the high screen. Everybody comes for the ball, and Porter knocks it down off the catch-and-shoot opportunity. Blue Dolson was not pleased. Wants you to keep an eye on this. After quarter three, Oregon coach Ernie Kent goes down with some shoulder pain. It's been called a rotator cuff injury after the game. Ernie went to the ground, had to be helped up, and was holding his shoulder for much of the rest of the game. Under 10 seconds to go after Ernie hangs in there. He's a coach. He stays in the game. Yvonne Redenovich, turnaround jumper. Arizona leads by one. Oregon on the push. What do you think of this call, Jay? I wasn't crazy about it, but he you know, he got away with another one before on a bad call uh, with the charge where Aaron Brooks took the charge on the Arizona guy. So he just jumped in front. I didn't think it was a great call. Shakur could have been moving. Brooks was probably lucky not to get teed up. Oregon inbounded it. Porter lost it. And Arizona, who lost it, home to Oregon, returns to favor, winning in Eugene by three. Illinois and Indiana, Kelvin Sampson and the Hoosiers taking on the line. I under 10 seconds to go. Dame tied at 31. McBride would lose it. Brian Carwell would come through with the putback. That would beat the buzzer. They have take another look at this. Clock winds down to two seconds. And the shot clock, which is a little bit less than the game clock, said there's a change of possession there. No shot clock violation was called. Illinois goes into the half of 33-31. Second half, IU down by four. Roderick Will Wilmot starts to get it going. So he was huge from shooting from three. He can also put it on the floor, finish in the lane. Just a versatile player for Indiana. Under a minute to go, Hoosiers down by one. Armand Bassett. So he was terrific in terms of pump faking and getting into the lane. This team can shoot so well from three-point line, but when they can drive and get into the lane, they're at their best. He had 15, but it's a two-point game with 12 seconds to go. Sean Pruitt has the ball at the foul line. A lot of options, but he gets called for the five seconds. Yeah, in this situation, the guards have to come to the basketball in this type of situation. Bad mistake for Illinois in a crucial time of the game. 65 to 61, Indiana holds off Illinois, who is really looking for a resume win. So, Hubert, here's the fighting Illini resume. The RPI good. Are they in or out right now? I think they're in. They've won five out of the last day. They've got good wins against Michigan State and Indiana. And this is a team, their last four games of the season, I think they can win, especially Iowa on the road. 
Well, Illinois, I just think they're out. I, they're not playing well. You get 26 points off of their 17 turnovers. They don't take care of the ball. They're 6-6 six and six in a conference, and they don't have that strength to get it done, in my opinion. I've got them just on the fence, and I'm leaning toward out. There's obviously a long way to go, and Illinois is a quality team. Now that they've got everybody healthy, though, they need to make a push toward the end, but I've got them out today. So two outs and an end to the Illini who are even up in the Big Ten. Opportunities to win games, but not necessarily opportunities to win marquee games until they get to the Big Ten tournament. However, should they run the table here, including a couple of road games, I kind of think that that 23 and 8, 10 and 6 mark would be hard to ignore in the Big Ten. The West Coast Conference Gonzaga has found some trouble. Josh Heitfeld and Theo Davis, who are redshirting this year, have been suspended indefinitely after their arrest Friday night for investigation of drug possession. Police in Cheney, Washington say that they found marijuana and psychedelic mushrooms in a car in which the players were riding. The two were released from jail this afternoon. Now, Heitvelt has been a star, while Davis has been the redshirt and hasn't played this year, but Heitvelt averaging over 15 points per game, averaging nearly eight rebounds, a candidate for West Coast Conference Player of the Year. He's certainly their inside presence and a blow to the Zags, depending on how long he's going to be out. Welcome in now, Andy Katz. And Andy, this is something that certainly has to be disappointing and, and a bit of a surprise for Mark Few and the Zags. There's no question, Reese. This has really shaken Mark Few. It's the first time in his eight years as a head coach, he's been at the school for 18 years, that he's had a late-night phone call with one of his players getting in trouble. But we want to stress, these players were not suspended from school. They are still going to attend classes next week. The university is going to meet on the matter next week. They expect to sort of see what happens with the legal case before they pursue any indefinite suspension beyond tonight's game against St. Mary's and Monday against Santa Clara. The other thing is few was also very disappointed that these players the night before big game they're trying to win the WCC are out on their own in a nearby town in Cheney Washington. All right, Andy Gonzaga with that game against St. Mary's and already with a couple of losses in the West Coast Conference. Now, they played a killer schedule. You would think that would help them, but now you have to evaluate how long Heifelt's going to be out and how much time he's going to miss. He's out. How does this affect Gonzaga here? Well, I think it affects them defensively. I mean, when you look at this team, they have always struggled in terms of rebounding the basketball, and Josh Heifelt averages seven rebounds a game. But offensively, I think they're going to be fine. They got Derek Rabio, Jeremy Pargo. These guys will pick it up offensively. When you talk about the West Coast Conference, a, a conference that really doesn't have a lot of size, they'll put David Pendergrass, Sean Mallon there. I think they'll be fine until they get to the NCAA tournament. Uh, I, I still think they're going to miss this guy because when you look at how they lost to Lyola Marymount last Monday night, they need him, especially against St. Mary's. But more importantly, they got a big game with Memphis next week. They need a resume win. They won one at Stanford, at Stanford. But, Jay, I just feel they're going to miss this guy, especially inside. I think this is the kind of thing that can derail a team completely because Josh Heitfeld had a responsibility to his teammates. And I'm not talking about the allegations against him. Those will be taken care of. But as Andy Katz said, he was out the night before a game not taking care of what he was supposed to be doing. And now if he's suspended indefinitely or misses the rest of the season, they have to find out who they are without him. They don't have enough games to try to figure that out. This could really shake up their entire season. They will not be the same team without him. They may not be the same team if he comes back. Josh Heitbelt suspended at the moment after his arrest last night. Getting set for Kentucky and Florida coming up at the top of the hour. Joe Kim Noah, this guy has terrorized Kentucky in his two career starts against him. He was dominant when we were in Gainesville last year for college game day. We'll see how he fares against Randolph Morris and the Cats tonight. Still to come on college game day, Billy Donovan, wired for sound, will show you how he keeps the Gators on their end. My brother started selling auto insurance. I, I got a little pressure to use them. A little? I'm State Farm Agent Amy Kaplan, and this is a true story. I didn't pressure you. I just, I think blood is thicker than water. So with some of the staff, we switched from State Farm to him. The service is horrible. Well, he wouldn't call me back, and he's my brother. So I called him, and he was ready to switch back. State Farm treated us like family. Yeah, better. Great service and great rates, it's all here. Nobody takes care of you like State Farm. Call an agent today. Like a good neighbor? State Farm is there. You need to see this. I want you to print this cipher on the front page of your paper. 
If you do not, I will kill again until I end up with a dozen people over the weekend. I like killing people because man is the most dangerous animal of all. We've got curfews in effect tonight. Citywide panic. I'm too scared to go near the window. The killer, fill at large. Hello? This is the Zodiac. Zodiac. Radar. In theaters March 2nd. looking at her, she'll be looking at you. So rent your tuxedo at Men's Warehouse and you'll look almost as good as she does. You're gonna like the way you look. I guarantee it. Chevy is proud to present Inspired to Be Me. This legend changed contemporary gospel music forever. Singer, composer, and founder of the Gospel Music Workshop of America to whom I'm so grateful. James Cleveland paved the way for us all. This Black History Month, be inspired. This Black History Month, Chevy salutes the revolutionary artists who paved the way and those who follow in their footsteps. Chevy, an American revolution. The world might not be made for you, but Men's Warehouse is. We have an extensive big and tall selection at prices that won't knock you out. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. Welcome back to College Game Day, driven by State Farm. Sea of blue awaiting the arrival of Billy Donovan's Gators. Billy D's won four in a row against Kentucky, not the most popular guy around here. He's with Aaron Andrews right now. Okay, Reese, thank you so much. Coach, as defending national champions and the top-ranked team in the nation, week to week, what is the biggest challenge for your team? Well, you know, I think I've been very blessed that I've got really, really good guys that really enjoy playing with one another. And I, I think it's really about just going one day at a time. And the biggest thing for me is making sure these guys are enjoying their experience uh, and enjoying one another. Uh, it goes by so fast. And, um, you know, right now we're just trying to go one day, what our next challenge is, try to take it on, do the very best we can, and improve and get better, and then move on to the next one. It doesn't get any easier tonight with number 18, Kentucky. What is the most important thing you need to take away from this Wildcats team? Well, I, you know, I think that they're a very, very good team. You know, they're shooting the ball very well from the perimeter. Um, certainly defending the three-point line is very important. But I think when you talk about a guy like Randolph Morris up front, you know, we're going to have to do a good job against him because he's really playing very, very good basketball and is also really a very, very much improved player. And then I think like anything on the road, you know, getting back in transition, taking away easy bets is going to be very important. So I don't know if there's one thing that we got to do. We've got to do several things and obviously it's a tough place to play and I think our guys are excited about the opportunity playing against a team as, as obviously as, as, as good as Kentucky. Push Iron, thank you. Thank you. All right, let's send it back over to Reese. A little hop, skip and a jump for the Gators as they get loose. 15 in a row, Florida's won. It is the longest active winning streak in the nation. Gators undefeated in the SEC. 9-0, the last team to run the table. Kentucky in the 02-03 season. They are the reigning national champions, the last team to defend and win the title was Duke in 1992. Here's Billy D. wired. Get motion. Get motion. Get the ball moving now. Get it moving. You're going to dribble the leather off the ball. Torian, dribble the ball right. Go, Torian. Get it moving. Pass. Get open, Chris. Pass. 